This episode is sponsored by Squarespace. I used Squarespace to build both Basics with Babish and BingingWithBabish.com. On the sites, you'll find recipes, equipment lists, other news, and updates. All beautifully designed, if I do say so myself. Get 10% off your first Squarespace order by visiting squarespace.com slash babish. Hello there, welcome back to Arcade with Alvin. Today, I'll be making the deluxe meat course from Dragon Ball Z, a feast that comprises of many of my favorite things, most of which are made with meat. One of the dishes in this meat course seems to be a deconstructed and reassembled chicken drumstick. So we're gonna start by skinning and deboning 12 whole chicken drumsticks. This takes quite a long time. The skin must be removed, the meat must be carefully scraped off the bone, and the tendons must be also displaced. And with the mountain of chicken I had in front of me, I called in some backup. This is Rachel. She helps with a lot of the food stuff here in the studio, and she makes for a perfect helping hand to get this job done. After about an hour of this, we now take our boneless chicken drumsticks and chop them into fine little pieces using two large cleavers. Now, you could grind this into ground chicken, but I believe this dish is similar to tsukune, a Japanese-style chicken meatball. And the best tsukune I have had involved hand chopping the chicken into small pieces so that you get nice little fun textures. So I'm going to do exactly that. And in many parts of China, you'll also see them using this technique to do beef, pork, or even chicken meatballs. We didn't really have big machinery used to grind meat, so manual labor was all we had. Another advantage of doing this is also being able to find those tendons that we'll have to painstakingly pull out by hand. And just to have some fun, I also had Steve and Rachel help come and do some of the chopping. Turns out banging down two big cleavers onto a cutting board full of chicken is a great way to relieve some stress. But after picking out a majority of the large tendons found inside chicken drumsticks and chopping it up some more, we have 12 chicken drumsticks worth of hand chopped chicken. I also added in our backup pound of ground chicken that we bought just in case we couldn't make this work. For seasoning, this calls for a heaping tablespoon of white miso, a tablespoon of toasted sesame oil, two thinly sliced scallions, a one inch knob of grated ginger. This also gets about a tablespoon of salt. I'll give this a good old mix and you have what resembles a dumpling filling. This chicken mixture now gets portioned onto a tray into rough little mounds, then set in the fridge for about one hour or so to firm up. In line with the theme of the Japanese style chicken meatballs, these usually have a tare or a sauce that they're glazed with. To make this, I'm adding half a cup of soy sauce, half a cup of mirin, a quarter cup of sake, a half cup of water, and a quarter cup of sugar into a saucepan until it boils and thickens. I'm looking for the consistency of maple syrup, not honey. That goes to the side while we shape our chicken back onto their drumsticks from whence they came. In the game, I think they're supposed to be a representation of that cartoon caveman style meat, which to me says something like a figure eight shape. So I'm mounting the mixture onto the bone and sort of pinching it around its waist like a corset to get that hourglass shape. I'm baking these at 450 degrees for about 10 minutes. Once they come out of the oven, I give them a little once over with the glaze and they go back into a 500 degree oven for another five minutes. Once they exit a little darker than before, they get a final brush of the glaze, which I've thickened again over the stove until sticky. Those are going to cool. The next item from the deluxe meat course in Dragon Ball seems to be a mound of fried rice. Start off with a couple of drizzles of oil to lubricate and in goes the extra chicken skin and tendons from earlier that we picked out, plus a half pound of chicken thighs. I don't like when things go to waste, and I think if we fry this up, it'll give the fried rice some really incredible flavor and texture. This gets tossed and stir-fried in the wok for about 20 seconds until crispy and brown, then removed from the pan. The remaining oil, I'm going with six eggs. First, letting the bottom set and crisp up before mixing it around in a circle. I found that if you just start to mix when you throw it right in, it kind of gets stuck to the side a little bit. After the eggs get crispy, I'm adding in three dry Chinese sausages, diced up. These fry with the eggs until their fats have been released and their flavors start to come out. Then, in goes a diced onion, and two diced red bell peppers. I believe those are the red specks found in the fried rice from the game. After tossing and turning for another 30 seconds or so until they start to get some color, those crispy chicken bits from earlier go back into the pan to share their chicken flavor with everyone having a party. In go the whites of three thinly sliced scallions. Toss and turn for another 30 seconds and we add in about four cups of day old white rice. I like to add just as much rice as I have other stuff in the pan at this point. This is just cooked rice that's been spread on a sheet of parchment paper in a tray and left to dry in the fridge overnight. The loss of moisture helps the rice break up a little bit better and ensures that each grain of rice can be coated with the flavors in stir fry like a steak rather than clumping up into a giant pile of mush. This gets seasoned with a tablespoon of salt, a tablespoon of sugar, and half a tablespoon of MSG. My preferred seasoning ratio is for fried rice. And when the rice is about 95% done, in go the greens from those three thinly sliced scallions from earlier. 
That seems like enough food for a Super Saiyan. Another dish in this deluxe meat course seems to be just a really simple solid steak dinner. So I have here two boneless ribeyes, about one and a half inches thick, and I'm just salting them pretty heavily on both sides. These get placed over a little wire rack in a pan, then sent to the oven at about 250 degrees and baked slowly until their internal temperature registers around 115. Once they've gotten a nice tan after exiting the oven, these rest for about 10 minutes or so before we go over to a ripping hot cast iron pan. I'm searing these rather quickly on both sides, probably no more than a minute total in the pan, but also making sure to render and crisp up the fat on the sides. Never forget the sides. And just like me, the steak is gonna go have a nice rest. Shocking as it is, this deluxe meat course does in fact have a non-meat dish. The dessert, which I believe are fried sesame balls filled with red bean paste. A common snack that I grew up eating in my childhood. To make the red bean filling, I'm starting by emptying two cups of red bean paste already made into a pan with a drizzle of oil to fry up and caramelize. We've made red bean paste from scratch on this show, like in the Spirited Away episode last time. So if you want to see that, feel free to watch that. But honestly, we're a little strapped for time and decided to go with a really high quality store bought one. In a medium saucepan, I'm bringing a a half cup of water and a third cup of sugar to a boil. Once the bubbles are there, I'm immediately dumping this into one and a half cups of glutinous rice flour into a large mixing bowl and mixing pretty vigorously. Once a rough dough forms, I'm covering and setting this aside for about 10 minutes. Then this gets wrapped up and rested for another 30 minutes. Our caramelized red bean paste has cooled by now which means it's firm and cool enough to shape into 12 evenly sized balls. Initially, I was going to make very small fried sesame balls, but I remembered that in the game, these were actually the large version, so I scrapped that and made large red bean paste balls. After dividing the dough into the same number of red bean paste balls we have, I'm flattening each portion of dough and attempting to wrap the red bean paste filling inside. This is essentially like making dumplings, except that if you overfill these, it's game over, so don't do that again, Alvin. The tough part is making sure that we're all the dough folds meat that it isn't too thick. And I was never really good at wrapping dumplings, so let's just say the good part is you can put the ugly side down this time. But hey, we got a couple of dough balls. These get a nice little coating of sesame seeds. I like to use a little bit of water to sort of roll the balls in my hand until they get sticky and just roll them around in a little bowl of white sesame seeds. Once they all have their little armor on, it's time to fry. In order not to drop the temperature too much, I'm only frying a couple at a time. First at 325 degrees for about 8 to 10 minutes. And once they've expanded and started to rise, increasing the heat to 350 degrees for another 3 to 5 minutes until every single part of the balls is golden brown. In order to avoid avoid uneven coloring due to the fact that these rise a lot, I like to press down with the spider to make sure that they can all get submerged in golden brown. Once the balls are done frying, they get sent to a paper towel over a tray to drain. Despite having eaten these for years and years and years, I never really thought about how these were made. And I will say, definitely feeling a little bit of pride over these little balls I've created. Another dish in this deluxe meat course seems to be a nice bowl of ramen. And look, I know making ramen from scratch is probably what you might expect, and we've done that in other episodes, like the Naruto one. But I want to do something more genuine to how I usually eat ramen, which is taking really nice packets of instant ramen that I like to go out and find, and cooking them, but also adding homemade touches to make them a little bit more cool, in my opinion. So we have a nice packet of tonkotsu flavored ramen, cooking two of those noodles as per package instructions, and adding all of those beautiful, delightful seasonings, oil packets, flavor packets, and sauces inside our finishing bowl. In goes the water that we cook the noodles in, and we bring on the homemade toppings. This is chashu that we've made by rolling a pork belly, marinating it, braising it, and now slicing and torching it. Into the soup go our ramen noodles, which I'm going to attempt to do the fold technique that will help present a bed of noodles that the toppings will have a better time resting on and not sinking into it. Onto this ramen bed goes four slices of torched chashu, cascading towards the edge of the bowl, one piece at a time. Adjacent to the pork slices go on a couple pieces of marinated bamboo shoots, or menma. Opposite the pork goes a soft boiled jammy egg, marinated in soy, and cut in half. Next to that, a handful of sliced green onions, and opposite that, two slices of nori. Now that pretty much every dish in our deluxe meat course is ready, it's time to finish plating. For our steak dinner, it seems like there's a brown sauce that goes on the base of the plate in the game. So I whipped up a quick Hayashi sauce, made with Hayashi sauce blocks found in packages. And just like in the game, a couple of green beans right next to the steak to keep it company, along with one single slice of grilled onion, and a handful of fingerling potatoes. And the final touch to our deluxe meat course, those chicken meatballs 
optics from earlier. We're gonna play a little bit of edible Jenga here, but instead of having the whole thing fall when one of them does, you're just gonna put it back on top and to finish the rest of that soy glaze that went on the drumsticks in the first place. Finish with a sprinkling of the leftover greens from those thinly sliced scallions. And I present to you our version of the deluxe meat course from Dragon Ball Z. We have soy glazed chicken meatball drumsticks, chicken egg fried rice with scallions, bell peppers, onions, and Chinese sausage, instant tonkotsu ramen with a few homemade additions, a seared ribeye steak with green beans, onions, and hayashi sauce, and for dessert, a mound of fried red bean sesame balls. Was everything homemade and completely done from scratch? No, not really. But I'd argue for a Saiyan that needs this much food, I really think they prioritize speed and quantity at this point. Which still begs the question, how does everything taste? I'm gonna go for one of these chicken drumsticks, I've been waiting all day to eat them. Honestly, yeah, definitely a little cold because this took some time to put together, but the flavor is there and the texture is really nice from the chunks of meat. And while I clean this drumstick off camera, Rachel's gonna go in for one of those fried sesame balls. She's never had one before and she seems to like it. Nice. After that drumstick is taken care of, I'm going back in on the steak. Let's check for doneness here, get a slice of the sauce. Yep, that's just how I like it. Nothing to say here, except that beef goes really well with the Hayashi sauce. Steve's gonna jump in here and eat some of the ramen. He's probably the most Saiyan-like out of all of us, so his opinion really matters. Yep, he approves. And I wish I could have shared this with the whole entire BCU team, but it was only three of us here today in the studio. And even though we couldn't finish this all in one sitting like Goku might have, we did the right thing and took everything home. There's a tournament of power tomorrow in my city, and I feel like I'm gonna need all the help I can get. Thanks again to Squarespace for sponsoring today's episode. They've been a great partner in supporting the Babish Culinary Universe and bringing my websites to life. From websites to online stores to domains and analytics, Squarespace is the all-in-one platform for you to build your online presence. They also have SEO tools so that your site is getting found and searched by more people more often. If you want to try it for yourself, you can start your free trial today by visiting squarespace.com babish to get 10% off your first purchase. 